Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Over the last couple weeks, I've shared a couple different ways of creating the pop-down corner card, better known as the pop-up corner card. Today, I have one more variation for you. This one is where the panel actually swings down, leaving an opening on the front of the card. You're not gonna be able to appreciate the movement on this card until we get over to the stamp table, but I'm excited to show you how to use it as well as give you some really good tips one is about mixing your glitters. So let's get over to the stamp table and let's get started. Look at the shimmer on the front of this card. Isn't this beautiful? The combination of the glitter and the foil, of course, this beautiful specialty designer series paper. Let me show you how the card works. I'm gonna give you an aerial view so you can see a little bit better. The front panel here is actually going to come down and then becomes the bottom of the card. So it plays two roles plays part of the front and of course part of the inside of the card. Really quite simple to put together but I'm going to give you some tips along the way as well as about mixing your glitter. You're going to be able to find all the cutting dimensions for today's project over on my blog. In the description bar below I've placed the link. This is an 8 by 8 inch piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'm going to score it into four equal sections. So I'm going to score at four inches using the light blade on the paper trimmer that's going to score the paper and then I'm going to turn it and do the exact same thing in the other direction. The Stampin' Up! trimmer also includes the cutting blade which is the black one. It's nice because they maneuver out of the way so you can use them both. I want a diagonal score line here in the bottom right panel of my card. So I'm going to turn it diagonally on the paper trimmer making sure that my point here and my point here are inside the actual track that cuts and scores. So what I'm gonna do is bring my scoring blade down to the center of my cardstock and it's relatively easy to see because it's clear. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna score to the bottom. Now that we have it all scored, we're gonna use our bone folder to reinforce those score lines. So I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna go the other way just to reinforce that. Remember this diagonal line that's right here? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our bone folder again to crease up in each direction. So I want you to reinforce this so that it's a little bit more pliable when we go to use the card. The next step here, we're gonna do some trimming, but we're not going to cut on the score line. We are actually gonna cut below it about a quarter inch to leave a tab area for some adhesive. So I'm just using some long tipped scissors that I have here in the stamp studio, and I'm leaving about a quarter inch. Those of you that are really precise with your paper trimmer, you can go ahead and use that instead. So I'm gonna come all the way here to the center crease. I am gonna cut up the center crease to remove this triangle here, because we're not gonna need that part. And then I'm gonna continue this up to the center. So you can see now that I've created a tab here. What we're also gonna do is I'm gonna snip away just a little bit more of this. I found by cutting it on an angle, it just closed a little bit better for me. So there we go, now we have our tab. One of the best tips I can give you about creating this project is to use a pencil and give yourself some cheat marks that are not obviously going to show. The opening of the card is actually going to be here on the back side. So I'm going to put a little pencil mark right here with an X so that I know that's where I'm going to die cut. And it being the front of the card, I am actually going to take the designer paper that I have for the front of it and I'm going to adhere it here before I die cut. That'll allow me to go through everything at one time. I'm going to put some adhesive on here, and since I am going to die cut it, I want to make sure that I provide adhesive um, um, amply all the way around and definitely down the center because we're going to pop out a small portion of that. So that's going to go here, and I'm just going to center it so you can see our pencil mark is well hidden. All right, now we're going to grab the framelits. I've got my magnetic platform here in my Big Shot. That's my favorite accessory for my Big Shot when I'm using my framelits because it'll help keep them in place. I'm placing a clear mat on the bottom. We're gonna to wanna to die cut a hole in the front of the card for the opening. I'm using the layering circles framelits. You're just gonna choose a size appropriate to the image you're going to use. But you're gonna see how this is not gonna fit through the big shot because of this area here. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do is we're actually going to turn this this way. But you're probably thinking it's still not gonna fit. So here's my next tip. Lay this framelit where you want it 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this panel over and this panel over so now that it's narrow enough to get through the big shot. Grabbing my other clear mat to go over the top to protect it and then we are going to die cut through there. Just cranking that through and you're going to see here that we've got a small impression in the paper here from the framelit. That's normal. So now we have our opening. While I have the magnetic platform out, I want to create a decorative ring around that opening. So I'm using that exact same framelit again, the one I just used to create the opening for the card. And I'm placing this on some gold foil and I've picked the next size up of the scallop circle. You're going to see how they nest one inside of the other. This is the great thing about these framelits. I'm going to lay those together, cover this up, and I'm going to crank this through. This is going to create a small ring that's going to be used around the front of the card to kind of give it a little prettier um, look to the card. So I'm going to take this off and push that through and look, now we're left with this really pretty ring that'll help hide that cut edge on the front of the designer paper. The front of our card now has the designer paper and the circle. So I'm going to grab that die cut little foil piece and that is actually going to get applied here. I'm going to use the liquid multi-purpose glue. I'm grabbing my silicone craft sheet. That's my best friend here in my stamp studio. Adhesive will not stick to it and this way when I'm going to align it on the opening I can make sure that it's well covered. The one thing about this glue is it's a little bit slower to dry than the fine tip but you l literally want tiny 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 drops. It's strong so you want to make sure that also the excess glue doesn't peek out from behind um, the, the foil. I'm going to make sure that that's well covered. All right, so I'm going to place this here and this is going to go right over the top. Just aligning that around the opening and then I'm going to press. And again, this gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So if you need to shift it a little bit right and a little bit left, the fine tip glue dries really quickly and I found that it dried too fast. I couldn't get this on here in time by the time I got all the glue all the way around my edges. Then I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to move that out of the way in case there's glue on there. And I'm just going to rub from the back side to make sure that it's secured in place. All right, so now we have our opening all ready. So we're back to the inside now. We've got our panel here. I cut an extra piece of cardstock so that I can layer my greeting inside of here. And I'm using the stamp set from the holiday catalog called Snowflake Sentiments. I'm having lots of fun with this. I was skeptical about it at first, but I love the words for both outside and inside, and the simple snowflakes are great. Going to be used for tags as well. I'm going to use basic gray ink for the sentiment, and I've pulled out the Merry Christmas greeting. So I'm going to ink that up. I'm going to place that here in the center of the card. I'm switching over to Smoky Slate and I'm using this little row of snowflakes. I want it a lot lighter than that. I'm going to stamp that right underneath it. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put dimensionals on the back side. I'm going to do one in each of the four corners and I'm also going to do one in the center. Um, I'm just trying to keep in mind that this is going to go through the postage meter and of course I'm going to get manhandled quite a bit before it gets to the other side. So I want to make sure I don't have that center sagging when it gets to the receiving end. Taking off those paper backings and then on the inside, again this is the cover, on the inside we are going to place that greeting. So that's going to go here in the panel of my card. This panel here from the bottom up is going to be the swing panel. That's the one that's going to be visible. So again, we are going to mark with an X just so that you can keep track of where you're at. So where that X is, is where we're going to put another piece of designer series paper. It's called Gear of Cheer. The metallics in this paper are beautiful. There's foil snowflakes, there's champagne um, uh, foil paper as well. Beautiful metallic washi tape. The whole suite of products here is really beautiful. And that's where I've chosen the paper from. So I'm going to place adhesive again on the back side. I'm going to be a little bit more generous than I normally am because I know that this panel is going to be moving up and down quite a bit. And that's going to go here where my X is. I'm just going to leave a small border of white cardstock around it. We're just about ready to assemble. This tab is actually going to get attached here to the card base. That's what's going to make it swing. 
So on the back side, not the front side, on the back side is where you're going to lay the tape because you're going to see as we close it, it's going to have to attach to it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. And you know, I do little X's because if I get called away, you know, phone call, something comes up, I forgot where I left off. Always make a mistake that way. So my tear and tape is going to go here. And I've left my tab plenty big enough to accommodate the width. I'm going to rip that off there. Then I'm going to burnish that paper of the tape inside. I want to make sure that when I release the paper that the tape itself doesn't come up with it. So I'm going to pull that off. Easiest way to do this is I'm folding my panels up and then I'm simply closing the card. I'm just lining it up the best I can and then I'm going to press. And look, there's that panel we talked about. So now let's go ahead and do our focal point. I've got a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock and I'm using the Smoky Slate ink again and I've pulled out that snowflake from that same stamp set, Snowflake Sentiments. I'm gonna ink that up and I'm gonna stamp that here on my scrap paper. I'm using the one and three quarter inch circle punch to punch out my image because I've already checked and I know that's gonna fit inside the hole that we've created. Here comes my glitter mix I talked to you about. I actually mixed a little bit of gold glitter with dazzling diamonds glitter and it gave me a really pretty iridescent gold. It's not real deep gold, which is what I liked to show off this paper so well. So I'm gonna grab my fine tip glue and I'm gonna work with this. Unscrew the cap and I always check it to make sure it doesn't have any dry glue on the tip and it comes out so quickly that I'm actually just going to tap and very gently, very gently apply glue inside those loops. Now, because this dries rather fast, you may want to do just a few at a time and then sprinkle glitter and then go back and finish the rest. Isn't that sparkle pretty? To recap your glue, there's a pin in the lid. It's best to put your finger here. That's going to help you guide the pin into the bottle and then just screw it on in place. Again, it dries really quickly, so you're going to want to keep that covered. All right, so here's my snowflake. I'm going to grab myself a few more dimensionals. I am going to flip that over and I'm going to place those on the back side. And again, I'm going to be a little bit more generous with these. I don't want this to sag to one side after mailing. So now we've got that ready to go. And then I'm going to center this right inside that opening. Place that here. I'm being really careful because I know my glue is not real dry. And then, of course, I thought it needed some bling. So I'm going to grab myself one of my larger rhinestones and I'm going to place that right in the center. That'll bring that silver and gold designer paper all into play. Isn't this pretty? All right, and there is your flap that fold down fun card. I've got one more card to share with you that is not Christmas for those of you that think it's just a little bit too soon. This one uses this little piggy stamp set. Isn't this cute? My little pig running around in the mud. I want to thank my friend Jill who gave me the idea of this little pig upside down. I just think it's absolutely adorable and I think it works really well with this fold. Here's the card we created today, the one I created before you joined me, and of course, the alternate This Little Piggy card. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Remember to head over to my blog. You'll find cutting dimensions, pictures, and supplies of these cards there. You can purchase all of the products in my online store, and I offer great online ordering rewards. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you next time. Have a great day.